everyone can hear. Um, so I'll just let you because people are still popping in. I have to manually put them. So we will do some chit chat for a while, but everyone. Uh oh. Okay, mute yourself. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, Mike, say hello. Wait, you need to be unmuted. There you go. <laughs> now there say you hello. Go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Yay. Yay. We did it. Here we are. We Look did at those it. beautiful faces. We did it. So this is being recorded. So there is your disclaimer, everyone. You will be out there into the universe. If you don't want to be into the universe, then turn your video off. So there's your legal disclaimer. I am going to share this with people because people are begging me to make sure I share it. So Hey, they, they record me all the time and I don't know it. So what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> you should sue someone. Who can we sue? Who can we sue? Well, as always, Mike Riley, thank you for for being a part of, of our world. I mean, really, it's a better world because you're in it. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. That was sweet. <laughs> so I thought we could open with how you and I actually met and how we're actually friends at this point, <laughs> because it was kind of a funny thing. Um, I did this little race called Ironman Lake Placid. Um, so anyone joining, please remember to mute your phone. I'm trying to mute you all, but it, then I'm mute mic, and so just try and mute as you go. But anyway, I was doing Lake Placid, and I thought at my when I had two miles to go on the last loop, I thought if I can get finish this race in time because I was close, I'm gonna kiss that man who I keep hearing say you are an Ironman. <laughs> I'm gonna kiss him <laughs> on the face. And so as I went through the um, the circle, uh, there you were. And I was like, I hope he's ready. <laughs> and I planted one right on you. And you said you're an Iron Man. And then um, later we became friends. So there you go. Not many people uh, kiss someone in, in the first pr meeting, but there you go. Hey, everybody. She simply <laughs> accosted me. What could I, I do? Did. You know? <laughs> it's true. So, Mike, how are you? What are your what are your thoughts about what's going on in our world? And I'm sure everyone wants to hear from you, so I'm gonna shut up. Um, oh, let's do the rules of the road first. So what I'm gonna do is after we talk for a little bit, maybe the last 30 minutes, open it up for to hear from you guys. So there's a feature on here to raise your hand and it's an electronic hand raising. And um, I believe, I'm not sure what you guys see. So if someone figures out how to do it, and can post it in the chat to tell people how to do it. But you can raise your hand and then I will call on you, unmute you, and you can ask Mike questions. Um, so that'll be the way it is. If we can keep the chat talk down to a minimum, then we can take questions from there too. So the cross talk, if we can keep that kind of low and just keep it to questions directly to Mike, that'll make things easier. And also special thank you to the Iron Man foundation and the women for tri board and the women for tri group and the women for tri ambassador team because that's part of the reason we i was able to share this with with all of you so thank you okay so mike i'll be quiet now how are you doing what's going on with you and what are you thinking about this world we're in right now oh what's going on with me uh the same thing that's going on with everybody uh this is tough this is a tough situation and i think the worst part of it is you know, when you're doing an event, you always know where that finish line is. We don't really know where our finish line is with this COVID-19. We have no idea. We're being told so many different things. So at the end of the day, what I try to do is, is, is talk to myself. I'm not in this alone. You're not in this alone. We are and have to be together on it. We can't put our heads in the sand and say, well, this doesn't affect me like it does other people. Yes, it does. So what we have to do is we have to realize that our best motivator, our best person to inspire us is ourselves. Sure, we can listen to people talk and, and, and try to motivate. And, you know, the old adage of teachers love to teach because they want to learn. We love to be able to try to motivate ourselves because it's going to go a little further than somebody else telling us something. And that's what I'm trying to do every day. Uh, I'm getting so many messages from people. Mike, can you, can you tell me this? Can you tell me that? 
uh, I need to hear your voice. And that is all very flattering. But your biggest voice is the one that lives within you. I, I, so many times I'll say things at an event and, and it was brought up the other day again by someone at the 2006 Ironman Wisconsin. It was raining so hard first thing in the morning and the forecast was 17 hours of rain. They actually said 17 hours of rain. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, beginning to end. And I'm standing up on the scaffold with everybody into the, in the water and I was hearing bitching and moaning by the work crew putting on the race, athletes walking into the water, uh, even the sound crew. Everybody was just right away early in the day really upset. And, and I go, this day, and I, I was too. And this day, I'm thinking, this is a bad way to start the day. So all I did was, and I did this as much for myself and my friends that were right there and working on the race and everybody in the water. I said, you've only got control over one thing and one thing only today. All these outside influences, mainly the bad weather and the cold water, all these outside influences, you can't do a darn thing about. So control your own attitude. Take care of it, and it will get you to the finish line. I had no idea how impactful those words were so much to so many people because still today, and that was 2006 six or seven, it, it's still coming back at me. Mike, what you said to me that day is living with me forever. And, and I really said that for me too. And, and so that's what you've got to do through all this. You've got to be able to tell yourself that, yes, I'm a, I'm a mom at home trying to juggle my work in my home office, you know, makeshift home office, trying to raise the kids and keep them busy, trying to do the homeschooling. I'm, I'm a dad trying to get them outside. I'm trying to do the things we need to do to make sure my family is safe and, and they're healthy. But you've got to take care of yourself first. You've got to tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to get through this. Because whether you believe it or not, you are an inspirer. You're a motivator. You, you, once you motivate yourself, the sky's the limit on how you're going to affect the people around you. You know, there are a lot of things we're listening to on TV, radio, uh, you know, online about what's going on. And we don't have a lot of control over that stuff. We just have control over how we pull it in and how we assimilate it and how we, in a positive way, can try to let our kids know and let our family and friends know that we're staying strong in this. Because if, if you stay strong and people believe you are, it will affect them in a positive way. So that's how I'm trying to live. You know, my wife and I are sequestered in our house. We can't see our grandkids. We can't see my son, daughter, in-laws. And, and it's, it's a bitch. It's hard. Uh, oh, no, you can't see your grandkids? What oh, are they yeah, doing without Papa? A lot of, face, a lot of FaceTime. And oh. actually, that's, that's even harder sometimes because they don't understand why Papa and Nene don't come to the house or they don't come here. They're only 30 minutes away. So, yeah, it's difficult. But there has to be an end in sight. I believe there's an end in sight. We just don't know where that finish line is. But I know, doggone it, together we're going to get to it. That's, that's what I believe. Oh, doesn't everyone feel better already? I want to call you like Uncle Mike or something. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of nephews and nieces. I, tell you. <laughs> I bet you've got a lot of nicknames too. And then they're all nice. No one has anything bad to say. <laughs> That's sweet. So I'm a... sure one of the questions, I'm going to go ahead and predict this question. What is the status of the races that are coming up that have not been decided by Ironman? So let's go ahead and answer that question. So any of those questions that come through can be ignored. <laughs> this is Mike's official statement on the rest of the year race schedule. And go. <laughs> Guys, uh, truly, I really have no idea. I'm not in the Tampa office. I'm here in San Diego. I uh, don't work in the corporate office, and I'm not a part of that decision-making process. Uh, I do know, though, from the ones I've talked to there, it is painstakingly hard for them to do what they're doing. So right now, obviously, you know the events that are canceled. Uh, I think we go out to Ironman Tulsa the end of May. That's still on. The June events, some of the June events are still on, like Ironman Ireland. 
but I, I have no idea. I think it's a week by week basis on how this is spreading. And Iron Man uh, has, first and foremost, had the athletes in mind to be safe. That, that's all I know. I, I, I'm like you. I wait for the news to come out and say, well, okay, that one's been postponed. We're going to September. Oh, that one's canceled. It's not going to happen. And so I'm in the same boat as you are. Awesome. Well, we have our first question. If you want to do that, unless there's anything else you want to say. Uh, I, I like questions. I, oh, but I, first, I, I, I want to say that I have this little. Um, uh, what's that? Here. What's that? I, I don't know. <laughs> it was just on my. So if you guys don't have Mike Riley's book, I wanted to not forget that before. But most what of is, you probably have. What is that? I had oh, to take that out. <laughs> I had to just steal that away from my wife. I've already read it, obviously, and and uh, this 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 will be a year of no nonsense. I'll tell you that. Appropriate. I feel like it's the wrong year for the year of no nonsense. Yeah, it seems well. like maybe next year should have been that book because <laughs> this feels like a lot of nonsense to me. All right, so Natalie's got her hand raised. I'm going to turn. If she will turn on her video, I will un. Wait, where did she go? I will unmute Natalie. I think you are unmuted. Are we going to see Natalie? I don't know. Can you hear me, Natalie? Okay, I'm going to go back, go to Allison at this point. Allison, I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, okay. Allison, can you hear me? I can. Perfect. All right, you're on. My two favorite people. Uh, Mike, I was thrilled to have you call me an Ironman in 2015 at Mont Tremblant. I was the last person to cross the finish line before midnight. Um, and it's still the highlight uh, of my Ironman career. Um, how do we keep people motivated, I guess? My son was training for a marathon. Ultimately, he'd like to do an Ironman. He's 22. And it looks like his marathon's going to be canceled. And a lot of us had races. I'm doing the 70.3. and I'm not sure if it's going to happen. How do we stay motivated? And, you know, what do you do? to stay motivated when things aren't going well? Well, uh, how to stay motivated, especially if you had a race on the schedule and you don't know what's going to happen. You know, I don't race a lot because I'm on the microphone at, at events, but that doesn't mean I don't work out. So when people, I go on a long ride with a bunch of guys or gals and, and they go, geez, Riley, you're in good shape. What are you training for? My standard answer is I'm training for life. I'm training to be happy. I'm training to keep myself healthy. And I'm training to feel better. So if there's not a race on the horizon because it's been canceled or postponed, don't let that change your lifestyle of who you are and how healthy you want to be. It, you know, the, the events are great. They're unbelievable. You finish Allison before midnight, and those are some of my most cherished memories of bringing somebody to the line at that, that time of night. But the event isn't the end all. You are. What you do with your life, how you work out, how you take care of yourself, how you eat, that, that's really what it's all about. It's that big journey that you took to get to that event. So if the event's not happening, don't change that journey. Your journey is still who you are. It's really going to be the thing to fulfill you uh, as much as that finish line did. So don't lose sight of that. And I know the young, I've had a lot of younger guys and gals, you know, get messages to me. Oh my gosh, I'm 25. I was going to do my first Ironman. I'm thinking, dude, you got lots of time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so stay fit, stay working out, get out there and on the bike, go out there for the runs and still be you on that journey. Just because the event's not happening doesn't mean the you part has to go away. Well, and I think one of the important things, most important things you ever said to me is uh, we were at Race Mania, I guess, two years ago. And you said, so when are you doing another Ironman? And I was like, oh, no, I, I just, I was like, I don't know. I just can't. And you <laughs> said, you know, Meredith, Ironman will always be there for you. And I thought that was so fantastic because there is that sense. And, and that goes for the sport of triathlon, what, what, no matter what distance you do triathlon will always be there for you when you need it but in order to be able to access that on race day you do have to continue 
to stay healthy <laughs> and you can't just be a couch. I mean, you can always be a couch potato and show up, but, but it may not be the day you wanted. All right, we have a question from Corinne. I'm going to unmute you. Where Hi. are you? I'm here. Can you see me? Oh, there yeah. you are. Hi. Hi. I am looking forward to hearing Mike's voice at Ironman Wisconsin this year in September. It'll be my first one. So with all of this uh, additional time on my hands, I'm definitely a book reader. So I appreciate the reminder of the two books that you guys already showed. But do you have other suggestions? I feel like it's not necessarily a training book that I'm looking for, but perhaps a mental endurance book at this point. Oh, I can pop in there. Have you read How Bad Do You Want It by Matt Fitzgerald? Because that is no amazing yes but how i bad had do you other want books it? by him and i really liked it so yeah, how bad you. do you want it that's my input mike well i may go back to the the one book that motivated me long ago that i still have up here uh called the power of one by bryce courtney and if you read my book you you find out i ended up connecting connecting up with bryce courtney at iron man australia because of me quoting his book He's written uh, tons of stuff, uh, but The Power of One was his first Fourier into, into writing, and it was, uh, it was incredible. Matter of fact, where is it at? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and is that Courtney, like C-O-U-R-T-N-A-Y? I guess if you find it. Yeah, I, I'm trying to find the original. Oh, someone yeah. posted the link. Courtney, yeah, I forgot the E. Courtney. Uh-oh. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's the one, you know, you want to check out Bryce. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Bryce Courtney. Oh, that's a big book. Well, this is also <laughs> the follow-up to Power of One called Tandia. When I met him in Australia, I had quoted him. The next year he came to the race with some friends and, and I was just flabbergasted to meet him. Uh, so when I came home, yeah, this book was waiting for me. And ever since then, I received every one of his books in the mail. Uh, so, so he's been a big influence on my life. He, he's not with us any longer, but it's, it's still amazing uh, how this guy can write. It's pretty, it's unbelievable. So try Bryce. Okay. And if anyone else has any suggestions, feel free to post. I see there's a few, few more here. Thank you, Corinne. Yep. Um, I just want to say thank you to Mike. Yes, thank you to Mike. All right, we have another question. All right, Natalie, you're up. I'm going to unmute you now. Can you hear me now? I can. Yay. All right, Mike, my question is a super selfish one. So my only Ironman finish was Louisville of 2018 and anyone that races <laughs> Louisville never gets to hear your voice because you're always in Kona. Can you bring me across that finish line, both for my Ironman and for this race that we're in right now? Well, I, I usually do it one-on-one -on -one and never in groups because it's, it's quite sacred, you know? So people ask me all the time and I, I'll, I'll call them up on the phone and do it. But for this, Natalie, I, I don't think, uh, I think you deserve it. So Natalie Webb, you are, an Iron Man. Thank you, Mike. Hey, by the way, Natalie, what, hat do, you, what hat do you have on? I can't see the... Oh, okay. Got it. Awesome. <laughs> you lucky duck. All right. That's the only one of those. Yeah, yeah. That, that is. I got to say. Children. Children. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here is another question. Katie, I'm going to unmute you. Are you there? Hello. Yes, I am. So my question is not for me, it's for, it's more for my dad. We did Ironman Arizona in 2012. Um, he was 50. His goal was to do an Ironman every two years. So his next one was Tahoe, which couldn't happen because of the wildfires. Then he went on to Coeur d'Alene, which had uh, the insane record heat and he had to drop out around mile 80 of the bike. So he is now training for Ironman Santa Rosa in July. And I feel like I feel like the world is just working against him. How can I'm not training for an Ironman at this time? How can I help him still be positive? Like obviously I can't go out and do any training with him, but what 
how can you help the people that are training and have this huge unknown and you know especially him because he just keeps getting like defeated every time he tries to go for it again um what's your advice to help them when they're doing their long rides solo instead of with a group at this point uh katie i feel for your dad and and tell him i do because it's uh he he's not in a boat by himself on this all i can say is you know if you're worrying about things that are not in your control, they're, they're going to control you. They're going to start defining you. And Santa Rosa, do we know whether it's going to happen? I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, so it, it, he, he's got no control over that. He eventually will get his Iron Man in. It, it, it's going to happen. I can tell by the way you talk, Katie, and and uh, his perseverance of, of still training and keep training, it's going to happen, whether it's Santa Rosa or somewhere down the line. You know, It'll be Sacramento next year because that's our hometown. That's so right. That's right. It's already on his horizon. <laughs> and, and it's on my horizon. I'll be up in SAC. So that, that'll be fun to bring him in. So, I, I, you know, I know it's tough. And it's funny. Isn't it great, Katie, that you feel like you're the one that's got to give your dad advice and, and keep him sane and everything as, as, <laughs> and I, it's the same. I'll ask my daughter and son, you know, they're in their thirties for advice. And I think, Oh my God, I've turned into the kid and they're the adult. What the hell's going on here? But uh, you, 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 you tell him he's got control over himself, his training and to stay at it. And one day he will cross that finish line. I have to unmute myself. Thanks, Katie. All right, we have a question from David. You are unmuted. Hey, Mike, this is Dave Wilson, uh, one of your Ironman Foundation ambassadors. I just wanted to say hi. Hi, Dave. And uh, also, uh, obviously trying to stay motivated. I'm gonna be doing the uh, Kona this year through the Legacy Program. What recommendations do you have? You mentioned books earlier. Um, if you're trying to do two and three hour rides and door you can imagine that sometimes it gets quite boring what videos do you recommend out there or sporting events that would motivate you as you're working out indoors during these times oh my gosh there's you know so many of the of the kona videos of the broadcasts uh, are are great and if you go back kind of if, as far as you can go back maybe into the early 90s and even the late 80s the videos in the late 80s were tough but, but uh, some of the TV shows from the 90s where, one, it's going to motivate you because some of the performances back then were just as fantastic as they are today. Plus, it'll give you a little bit of a history lesson on the sport. And I always say our best history is, is going to come at us in the future. But when you go back and see what the foundation was of the history of triathlon, of Ironman, of some of these great athletes back then, it's going to give you a deeper appreciation. And before you know it, your workout's going to be done. So I'd go back to some of those videos. Sure, you can play the ones in the 2000s and, and uh, up to now. But uh, go back and try to dig up some of those old Ironman shows from the 90s and the early 2000s. I think you're going to be amazed at uh, what you're going to see and what you're going to learn. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. You got it. All right. Let me see. Does anyone have their hand up? Okay. Lorraine, you are now unmuted. Hi, everybody. And hi, Mike. Um, hi, Lorraine. I have a man, and nor will I ever be one. But I just want to tell you that I'm one of those people that sits up and watches Kona at 3 o'clock in the morning to watch people come in. And I, it is just motivating to me to watch uh, that magic hour as people come in. Uh, it's just a testament to character, and it's really cool. And I love hearing you call people in. So, Lorraine, when you, when you watch that, what does it, what does it motivate in you? Um, the anything is possible. I'm 60 years old. I came from a morbidly obese couch potato and uh, sort of came back from that. And it, it's motivating not just for working out, but just for life. 
that these people had the dedication to just to stay in it, to stay in it, to have that moment and that journey. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's interesting at a lot of races, I'll be at the finish line, obviously, and I'll be looking in the crowd and there'll be 12 and 13 year olds, you know, uh, young children, maybe their parents are doing the race or the aunt and uncles. And I see the looks on their faces. And, and I say it out loud a lot of times. I go, the best lesson in life we can teach by our actions is just finish what you start. And I think that's one of the biggest things about Iron Man. It, it, it really, it really equals life because if everything you do, you finish what you start, you're going to be a success. You're going to be a winner. You're going to be happy with yourself. You're not going to make excuses. And I think, Lorraine, what you see out there is you see all these people finishing what they start, what they set out to do, and, and, and finishing it. And you know what? That finish line always isn't the finish because then – if you pass that on to that 13 year old, because I'll be at a race and have 18 and 19 year olds come up to me and go, Mr. Riley. Well, as soon as they say that, I, oh my gosh. Anyway, I, they go, Mr. Riley, I, I watched my mom do an Ironman when I was 11 years old. Now I'm going to do it. So there's, that's one of the sweetest things I can ever hear because I know mom passed it on with her actions and not her words. And that's why I think our sport is so great, whether it's running, whether it's triathlon, whether it's anything you do. If you finish what you start, you are a winner. Lorraine is one of my favorite people. She went skydiving for her 60th birthday this year. Yeah! <laughs> She's cool. It. She's cool. Um, one of the interesting things you said is is the determination to keep going and to not quit. And I have a question for you that I think will benefit the audience is how do you start? Like, what is the mindset on race day? I mean, I know you said focus on what you can control, but I know every time I step on a starting line, I say, I am going to finish this race. I've never started a race and said, I hope I can finish this today. So what is some of your advice for like race day mindset? Oh, gosh. If you feel good about the training you've done and the time you've put in, then I say to people, don't let yourself down on that day. You didn't let yourself down in your training. And you're inspiring your family, your friends, your children. And it's your day. It's, it's, race day is always the one day in people's lives, whether they do a bunch of races or just one or two through a lifetime. It's the one day in your life you're controlling your destiny. 100%. Sure, you can get a flat tire or get a mechanical or you get hurt or something may happen that's outside of your control, but you push through that and you get to the finish line. So it's a truly a day that you have to look on as I, I'm going on a long training uh, you know, a training day with a bunch of my best friends. And what more could I ask for? You're alive. You're, <clears throat> you've got those nerves in your stomach before that cannon goes off. That's a good thing. That shows you're, you're alive. You're, you're, you're doing what other people can only dream about. So just enjoy the day. It's your day. It's in your control. And you know, just like Meredith said, that you're going to finish. Just yeah. tell yourself, I'm going to finish. That's right. That's right. Okay, Christine, I am unmuting you. Go ahead. Hi, Mike. Hi, Can you Christine. Hear me okay? Hi, yeah. we met in Tampa. I'm also one of um, your Ironman Foundation ambassadors this year. Super excited to, to um, carry that role. My question is, I, I uh, took your um, inspiration and, and advice to heart. And I signed up for my very first Ironman in Lake Placid this year in July. Um, and I selected races that I know that you were planning to announce that. <laughs> so are you going to, I know with postponements and, and cancellations, I guess for the races that are going to be postponed for a later date, um, do you have any thoughts on if you're going to be able to still keep um, that schedule and announce at those races that you're planning to announce at? Uh, it's 100% uh, 
yes if it works for my schedule. Okay. So far, so far, Oceanside seventy point three. They rescheduled that. I'm doing that, and they rescheduled what Ironman St. George, and that date's available. So, oh great, okay. Yeah, Ironman's really not going to put races. I mean, if they put it on the Kona weekend, obviously we know where I'm going. But sure, uh, it is my intent that if any race moves, I'll I'll be there. You know, it's interesting. At the beginning of the year, my son Andy and I took a look at the schedule because I'm approaching. Uh, my 200th Ironman on the microphone. And the way the schedule worked out this year, it's going to be Kona. Well, now I don't know if that's going to happen. And somebody said to me the other day, God, Mike, you must really be disappointed. No, I'm not. It's not about me. It's, if I hit the 200 someplace else, whatever. So it, it, I, I could have, you know, drove myself crazy thinking, oh my God, it's not going to be Kona. Well, so far this year, it still will be. And so any race, that's uh, uh, postponed or, or whatever, Christine, I'm going to do my best to get there. And by the way, I have that hat. I got about three of those hats. I should have <laughs> worn it. You know, it's this is favorite. unusual. Mary, if you know, I usually have a hat on. Like, I thought, where's your hat? I didn't even know you <laughs> well, had a hat. I thought it was I got one hat. close by. Yeah, here we go. What's there you one? go. <laughs> yeah, it's the 20th anniversary hat from Lake Placid. Do, do you feel better? I got a hat on. <laughs> well, I hope to see you there, Mike. Thank you. You too. You Thanks, too. Christine. All right. We have a question from, hold on, I'm trying to hover, from Krista. You're unmuted. Great. Thank you. Um, Mike, I actually kind of have a lighthearted question for you. Um, I did Ironman Arizona in 2017. I was one of the last finishers, and it was an amazing day. It took me, that was my third attempt and my first finish. And that was uh, an amazing day. Good for you. Um, but my question for you is how, how do you keep your voice so strong through a day like that? <laughs> uh, for 17 hours, it was just as strong at the finish as it was at the start. And that just is amazing to me. I, I, I kiddingly always tell people I'm Irish and I'm full of you know what. So it, it, <laughs> It, it just happens. I, I, I consider myself very lucky to be able to keep projecting. And, and there are some tricks that, you know, I obviously don't drink cold drinks during the day. I keep it to the warm stuff, keeps the voice going. I try to speak from the diaphragm. You know, I do all those things. But, you know, really, I, I think I will myself. My biggest fear is not to have that voice when you're coming in in those later hours. I, I swear, it's like... I sometimes have dreams and wake up in sweats, go, oh my God, I lost my voice. You know, it's like that great marathon runner not being able to run in their dream. And so I, I kind of will myself. I, I'm not going to let it happen. I don't scream and yell all day. I let the microphone and the, and the sound system do the work for me on the projection of the voice. And, and I've, just been, I've just been lucky. I, I knock on wood every time that, you know, I, I, I keep the voice. And you know, the next day it's beat up and a lot of times I can hardly talk, but not on race day. I just, you know, I, I'm just fortunate that way. God bless me with a voice that just keeps going. My wife doesn't always agree with that, but what can I do? Well, from somebody who uh, got to hear your voice and um, dreamt of that moment for a long time, thank you very much. You're welcome. It was my honor. Thanks, Krista. Um, we have a question from Donna. You are unmuted. Hey there. Thanks for um, taking my question. I did uh, Chattanooga back in 2015, and I was very prepared for it and had a fantastic race. My question is, and I'm not sure if you can answer this, but from that point forward, I have seen the possibility of me doing a race going down and down and down. I, I have this issue or that issue and I just see it slipping away from me. Do you have any stories of people that have done a race and then come back five or more years later and done one? Oh my gosh, yes. I, you know, you're not alone, Donna. It's, you know, when you build up and you go on that journey to finish an Ironman and you come to that finish line and you think the world is your oyster. And, and I, I say it in my book, you know, no matter what happens in your life, you'll always be an Ironman. So people want to go back to that 
journey. They want to go back. And a lot of times life gets in the way and things happen and you just can't seem to get there. But don't let it ever put out that piece of that flame in your heart of wanting to do it again. I've had people come back 10 years, 15 years. I'm trying to think what race it was last year. It might have been, uh, it might have been, Wis no, not Wisconsin. Yeah, it might have been Wisconsin. Guy came up to me and said, uh, Mike, you called me an Iron Man. And a lot of people do that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you called me an Iron Man back in 1990. And now I'm doing one again. I go, whoa, that's a, that's a long gap in between. And he simply looked at me and said, life got in the way, but now it's back part of my life. I thought that was, I go, dude, I can't wait to bring you in. And he, he started tearing up. I started tearing up. And all those years in between, he had that fire lit. He, he, he didn't let go of it. And who cares if it's one year you come back or 10 or 20? Just keep that fire lit and, and you'll be back, Donna. I've seen it happen over and over again. Okay, thanks. All right, Michelle. You are unmuted. Hey, Mike. How are Hi. you? My name's Michelle Whaley. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am part of the class of 2019. Louisville was my first. And I just wanted to let you know how much it meant to me that Iron Man had such an incredible attitude um at that race as we were heading into that day a lot of people knew that it was looking like we were not going to be able to get our swim in because of the ohio rivers condition that lovely toxic algae bloom and i was really prepared i had a great group of people that joined me we had eight athletes from my tri club that were joining me to to race that race and I never once felt less than for making that my first race and completing it. I felt every much as an Ironman as anybody that had successfully executed all three disciplines. And I, I really feel like that I wouldn't have felt that way if it wasn't for the incredible, incredible support and attitude of everybody around that race that day. And I. I know you weren't there, but I felt like you were there and it was just, it was just really amazing. And I know that it's so hard. And so in this, with what's going on in the world right now, I never really thought about how much that was going to impact me, control what you can control. You know, we couldn't control the condition of the water. Um, we just went forward with that same great attitude as athletes and, you know, went to work and got it done and, and managed what was going on in our bodies and between the ears. And um, yeah, and, and it, it really did affect me and lots of my friends that knew how much we had prepared for that day. And it, it was just awesome. So I just want, want you and all your people to know how much that meant to me. Michelle, you don't know how much that's appreciated because I, I work with the operations crew at all the Ironman races, the ops men and women that uh, are out there before race, setting up the course on race day, making sure your race is safe, breaking things down. It, it is amazing. It's like I'm watching some of the most passionate people in the world. They just don't put up cones and barricades and say, okay, I got my job done. Their number one concern is the athlete. And I know so many of them. I mean, there's hundreds of operations crews that put on the races throughout the world. And they have my respect more than any other group of people I know. And they would love to hear you say that, Michelle, because that's all they do. They put their heart and soul into it. Uh, and they work together as a team. There's no, there's no individuals trying to gain glory from being in operations of events. They just aren't. They're there for one reason and one reason only, to make sure your race day is safe, number one. You have the best race possible, and they've got a perfect course set up for you. So thank you very much for that, because the operations crew of Ironman and all the endurance events throughout the world, they, uh, they're not heralded, but they should be. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, the next question is from Monica. Monica, you are unmuted. 
Thank you. I can't show video because I'm actually at work today. I work in the medical field, so I am well, going thank to you for that. <laughs> incognito at this point. Um, so Mike, I did Ironman Maryland back in 2015 when the hurricane came through and we had to bump our race back two weeks and we tapered and then built back up and tapered again. And it was more of a mental uh, nightmare than anything, but I wanted to kind of throw some light into this as well and just find out what was your first triathlon you did and then oh. what was your most recent one and who called you across the line? <laughs> so the first triathlon I announced or I did? The first one that you did. Oh gosh, that was, uh, I think it was 1988. We, we had a triathlon here in San Diego on Coronado Island called uh, Super Frog. And it was uh, a bunch of Navy SEALs and a bunch of us, and it was a half Ironman. For some reason, we were swim, biking, and running, but didn't do an organized event. And then the first one we do and put on was a, was a half Ironman. Uh, so that was my first. Our goal, all the Navy SEALs could swim like fish. They, they, they could ride pretty well. I caught a few on the bike, but the goal was to try to pass as many as you could on the run. But I was always afraid they would get so peed off that we were passing them. I tried to pass them with a wide margin and quickly so they wouldn't come after me. So I was a skinny runner triathlete and there's these bulky seals. So that was my first. But you say who called me across the line? Well, you have to read that in my book of whether or not I've done an Ironman or not and who called me across. <laughs> Ah, the big cliffhanger. Nice, nicely done, Mike Riley. Nicely done. <laughs> um, okay, do we have any other questions? Natalie, you had one. So if anyone else has one, I'd like to take. There you go. Uh, Beth? Am I unmuted? You are. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I'm really nervous. So I actually wrote notes. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> So not so much as a question, but a comment to say, um, I've uh, seen you announce athletes in Kona. Uh, my husband did Placid last year. He's a little salty that he didn't get the Joe Hornack, you're an Ironman, but I see, I see Meredith's no thank you on that. But um, I just wanna say how special it is that you treat every athlete like a gold star athlete. Um, you just make it so magical and so special. And I'm gonna keep it really positive. I'm doing uh, Lake Placid. And so I look forward to you announcing me. It, uh, I do too. And you know, people always say that. They go, how do, you, how do you have that enthusiasm for each and every one? And the way I look at it and the way I approach it, I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you when you're coming towards that finish line. It's just me and you. It's just, and I, and I wanna make sure your family and your friends know what you did. And so I give it everything I can for each and every one because it, it's, you deserve it. And I couldn't imagine coming across a line and somebody being unenthusiastic for what I did. <laughs> Heck, I, I, I wanna, I, I just, I couldn't imagine that. You know, like, hey dude, I just did an Ironman. You didn't say anything. And, and it's funny because other announcers throughout the world uh, are, are doing an unbelievable job because I can't be everywhere. And I tell them, you gotta, you gotta have enthusiasm for each and every one and call them an Ironman. Some even say, oh, I can't do that. That's your thing. No, it's not my thing. It's their thing. You are an Ironman is yours. It's not mine. It's not somebody else's and uh, another voice. It's yours. So I just have the honor and the privilege to be able to give it to you. And so I get emotional thinking about it because each and every one needs to deserve that. And if I get a call, five or six people from one, one race didn't hear it because I was in the bathroom or I missed them or the chip didn't work or whatever. That's why I call people up and give it to them one-on-one -on -one because they deserve it. Oh. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. And I can speak, uh, I know Beth personally and she has a great story. And so I know it means a lot to have the opportunity to pat, to cross that finish line. And so fingers crossed for Lake Placid, my friend. And Meredith, um, that's the other reason why, you know, when I wrote the stories in my book about people, some amazing stories of what they went through to get to the finish line. Yeah. When I see somebody finishing, I don't always know your backstory. 
but I know you could have gone through hell to get to that start line, let alone the finish line. So I want to make sure that you receive the accolades because everybody has a backstory, good or bad. It's, it's a story of their life and how they overcame something because you just don't get to an Ironman finish line by, oh, I think I'll go do it uh, because there could have been things happening in your life. And, and I know everybody has a backstory. So that's why I'm going to make sure I tell them they're the greatest in the world. And I, I tell this story, so anyone that knows me has probably heard it, but at Iron, if you haven't had the chance to be at a midnight finish line at an Ironman, like you're really missing out. Um, so you should go to the nearest one and just go stand <laughs> if, if you have the chance. <laughs> but in Texas, I think it was 2014, um, literally that, that was the year they had the crazy lightning storm and it was, it was just crazy. Oh, the, the hell, um, yeah. Yeah, the hail and all that. And there was probably one minute to midnight or the cutoff. I forget if the cutoff moved. But the finish line in Texas is like a weavy gate. You know, it's like up, down, up, down. And with one minute left, there was a guy. He was probably 100 yards down the weavy gates. And Mike, I see him from the finish line. He hurdles literally like a track star all these gates and he goes in with this guy and they run into the finish with, I kid you not one second to spare. And it's that kind of heart, like to see that at a finish line. It's, I mean, everyone is crying. <laughs> if you had a dry eye in the house, like something's wrong with you, you're flawed in your soul. Um, but that kind of heart is what, um, what Mike talks about. Yeah. Donna says, be careful going to an event. That's how you get <laughs> sucked in. Well, sure. uh, you know, it's interesting. I remember that vividly. And there were two fences. I got over the first one, just flew over it. And, <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, that's not bad. And when I was approaching the second one, I go, I'm thinking, Mike, just don't fall on your ass. This is going to be <laughs> bad. If This is going to be bad. So I remember just clearing it then and, and uh, running to get them. So well, see, like my urban legend is it was like 67 fences and you had like a flame <laughs> behind you and there, you know, there was music, chariots of fire and all that. So um, Natalie has another question. And since no one else does, I will take her question. You are unmuted, Natalie. Are you there? Hello again? Hello. Okay. I'm going to mute you back and unmute Christine. You are on, Christine. Hi. Um, so, Mike, my, my husband does um, race announcing for a local crew called Score This out here in Buffalo. And um, I'm wondering if you have, he is here, but he's off camera. Um, I'm wondering <laughs> if you have any advice for him on uh, making his announcing a little, a little more polished from a, from a pro uh, standpoint. Oh, gosh. Uh... Yeah, people ask, you know, men and women that want to get into the business and things like that, they always ask me, what do you do? And it's uh, I, I, my number one thing. On race day, you very seldom hear me say the words I or me because they mean nothing. It's all about them and they. When, when I hear people on a microphone, was it, whether it's on a newscast or it's live, or, and it's always me and I and me and I, I'm thinking, Dude, it's not about you. It's about what you're reporting. It's about who you're talking about. Uh, so keep that in mind when, when you do that. And really, have as much knowledge about the event. But your enthusiasm, your great enthusiasm will override any lack of knowledge you have. And people pick up on that. They want to be happy. They're at a happy event. So you have that same attitude when you're on the microphone. And it just permeates everybody. That's why the biggest part of the day for me at an Ironman, it's 50% of the day is the swim start of what I say, what I do, how we can keep everybody calm. I'm trying to keep me calm. I mean, you've got, it's a tough part of the day. So once the swim starts over, it's like 50% of the stress of the day is over with. But it, you, you've just got to be natural. Don't try to be a comedian because it'll backfire in your face. People you know, I'll say things on the microphone and people start laughing and I'm going, what the heck did I say? What was so funny? But people pick up on things and your voice and it, just be natural, as natural as you can be, because people appreciate that. They don't want to hear false or I or, or I did this or I spoke to them or 
you know, look at me, I'm on a microphone. Uh, it, it doesn't work. And it, it, so just be natural. Be you. Thanks, Mike. One of the things I think is so important, someone just texted me, and um, is to remind the beginners. So we've talked a lot about the Ironman today, but to remind those that are just starting. First of all, Ironman is not the only triathlon in the world. Right. Um, it's you know, Mike is the voice of Ironman, so obviously we're talking about that a lot. But you know, just to encourage beginners to find the joy in it and and to to keep going because it is it is all about the journey. And Mike, you talked about this earlier that, you know, races get canceled, plans, plans change, but it is about our health and continuing on this journey. And so for any beginners out there, you will learn how to swim. <laughs> you will be able to get the water out of your goggles on the fly. It will, you know, all these things, you will be able to bike in a straight line and you'll be able to keep moving forward. So um, just, you know, Mike, if you have any words for beginners out there, I think would be good too. Well, hell, I still can't ride in a straight line all the time. So <laughs> I've been riding for a lot of years. I, you know, the beginners, you're right. Iron Man isn't the only game in town when it comes to that. If you, if you want to aspire to do that one day, fantastic. But I had a woman come up to me not that long ago and say that she was with her husband and he was doing the race. She goes, Mike, I've never done an Iron Man. You know, said it to me kind of, I go, okay. And you know what, Mike, I'm never going to do an Iron Man. And I'm sitting there going, oh, okay, that's fine. But I've done like so many sprint triathlons. I go, but she said it in a way like she was discounting that. And I go, no, 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 don't discount that. Who, who says you have to do an Ironman? You're doing a lot of sprint triathlons during the year. Fantastic. In, in my mind, you're still an Ironman. You're a triathlete. You're, you're doing things for yourself and you're in the sport. And so never discount what you do just because you don't do an Ironman. It, it, if, if you swim, bike, and run throughout the week in your training, fantastic. That, that's, if that's enough, that's perfect. So the end all has to be what makes you happy and you feel is good for you. End yeah. of story. Yeah. All right, Polly, you're up next. You are unmuted. Okay. Um, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to thank you for all you do. Uh, I've never done an Ironman. I don't want to. I've watched my friends who have their training and I'm just like, uh, I don't want to beat up my body that way. But uh, I just, uh, I must admit every time I uh, see somebody's story on Women for Try or some of the other uh, groups, I tear up and go, oh, Maybe I should do one, but I'm happy doing, um, you know, my sprints and Olympics. And I've done a couple of uh, halves and they were hard enough. But, um, you know, when I tell people I do triathlons, they're like, oh, the whole thing. And I have to explain to them, well, they're different distances. And no, I don't do uh, Ironman, but. Uh, they're all challenging in themselves, but uh, just wanted to thank you for your time here. And uh, this is a uh, nice break from uh, social distancing. That's right. That's right. Well, Thanks, Polly, Polly, thank you very much. Thank you. And, and you know what? It's interesting because uh, so many people out there are influenced by Ironman athletes to do what you do, Polly. Like I said before, so what? You don't do an Ironman. That that's fine, uh, but I'm just glad you're 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 inspired by it, which is which is great. And uh, you know what you do is inspiring others. So be be proud. Thanks. Well, we got about three more minutes, so I think that's probably it for the questions. Well, wait on. a minute. I'm I'm the Ironman announcer guy. I go all friggin' day long. What, well, what do you mean, I mean, if that's minutes? what. Three more minutes. I'm just getting. I'm just getting started, you guys. Well, I mean, I go 17 hours on these things, so we can just do this all day long. I just need to get a couple of snacks. Oh, Lisa's got a question. Lisa, you are unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hey. Hey, Maya. Hey, Meredith. Um, I sit on the board of advisors with uh, with Meredith for Women for Try, and I don't have a question. I just want to genuinely thank both of you guys for bringing a little light and happiness today, because 
it's a crazy time and this is so much appreciated. So thank you guys. My pleasure. I, I, just, thank I, you, wish, I wish I could do this every day. Maybe I will. And, Who knows? <laughs> and good to see your face. I haven't seen you yeah. in so long. It's been Hi. ages. I know. And you look the same. Always so good. Yeah, my hair is uh, up in a ponytail. <laughs> you know, you know I, 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 I love the Women for Tribe movement. And if you've all known me over the years, uh, everybody is equal to me. And, and they always have been. But, but the other reason I love Women for Tribe, Sarah Hartman will say, I'll be at a race. Mike, on your schedule, let's make sure you uh, meet over there for the, with the Women for Try, and she'll give me a meeting place and the time, and, and I'm always the only guy there. I go, Sarah, wh why do you have me? Well, you're an ambassador, and, and they want to hear you say things, so I'm honored that you guys make me a part for Women for Try, but I'll get some guys come up to me and go, how do you get in that group? How can I join that group? I go, no, 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 you can't join that group. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Um, Catherine's got a question. Hi there. Uh, just wondering your advice for getting kids into triathlon. That well, one's too the, young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, how old is that one? Uh, six months. Uh, is it he or she? I can't tell. He, his name's Clark and we're going to start swimming lessons once this all uh, clears up. You know, it's interesting. Remember I spoke earlier about how actions speak louder than words. It, it, uh, it, I did triathlon, you know, a long time. I've been part of the sport and my wife did it. And, and all of a sudden one day, my son and daughter, I think they were like seven or eight. They called me out uh, to, the, to the garage, to the front driveway. And bikes were laying on the, on the ground. And they go, dad, we're doing a triathlon. And I never said anything to him about it. I, I go, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we're swimming in the pool, so we got a pool in the backyard. Then they ran out to their uh, bikes, rode up and down the street, and then did a run. And I'm thinking, and I even wrote about that in my book. I go, my gosh, that, what prompted that? I didn't, well, our actions prompted that. So, you know, Catherine, if you live the lifestyle, the kids may pick up on it. My son he, he never did triathlon, went and played uh, baseball uh, in college, got paid to play baseball after college, was never going to, you know, and all of a sudden it decided to do an Ironman. It, that didn't come because he wanted to get in better shape. I think it's because of what he saw when he was a kid. So the actions, just, just live off the actions and watch what happens. I keep trying to unmute yeah. Catherine. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Take care of that little one. Clark, good name. All right, Kirsten, I hope I'm saying that right. I am, why is my computer, to, here we go, unmute. You are unmuted. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much for doing this today. I am a now teaching from home to high school students. So we've just transitioned. Wow. And what you've talked about and not knowing where the finish line is is so helpful because i have a lot of high school seniors who don't know what the rest of this year looks like for them so um i like the the focus on control what you can control so thank you um it's really helpful you're welcome kirsten and you know i i thought about this the other day about the seniors in high school or the graduating seniors in college not being able to do a ceremony that's like doing a race and they take the finish line away from you you know 50 yards before you get there so it it's got to be very difficult and i commend you for you know making sure you as teachers who uh, if you don't all know this i am a teacher that's what i got my degree in and i taught school for a few years before i got into the endurance sports and and uh what we say to them is just impactful for the rest of their lives so thank you for what you do is it Kirsten or Kirsten? It, uh, Kirsten. So there you go, guys. I'm going to give it to you right now. The hardest part about my job, a name will come up on the computer. <laughs> and, and I go, okay, which way is it? I don't know because people pronounce their names. It could be Caitlin. It could be Catlin. It, it, you know, so I, it's 50-50. Well, it seems like all the time I get it wrong because people let me know. You called me Catlin. It's, it's Caitlin. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Mike. I'd be like, you are an Iron Man. You, well, when, you, when you, when people, you. <laughs> when people say I mispronounce their name, I go, I, I apologize for that. But, 
did I mispronounce those four words after your name? They go, oh, no, 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 you said those right, thank you. you know, right, so. right. Um, someone, ty Tanya typed in a question. I'm actually gonna take the first stab at answering this one. She said, I'm obese and a newly recovering alcoholic and I've always dreamed of crossing the finish line of an Ironman. How do you get started though? I'm out of breath walking around the block. This is a shameless plug for my book, Triathlon for the Every Woman, because I too was an obese, I don't like the word alcoholic personally, because I, I don't, I just, but you know, I, I'm not saying judgment. I'm just, I don't like to say that, but for a super drinker is I, I, the word I use, but that was my story. My story um, was that, and I've crossed the line of not one, not two, not three, not, but four Ironman finish lines. So my story is about how you can absolutely do it. I was out of breath walking as well. And the answer, the short answer to that question is, you start walking and you just keep moving forward and you can do anything. If I can cross the finish line of an Ironman at 205 pounds and Coeur d'Alene and in Lake Placid, the mountain regions <laughs> of our country, you can do it. It takes a ton of hard work and I don't care what anyone says. It's harder for big girls to get up mountains than small girls. It's called physics. So we have to work really hard and build really strong legs, but you start where you are and that is where you are right now. And so I believe in you. And if you would like to join a group of sober people, I have a group called Grateful Sobriety and you can come join us too um, for some of the support in that area. But I will let Mike respond now too. I just wanted to add my two cents on that one. <laughs> Those are my people. You know, it's interesting. I've come across a lot of people <clears throat> Uh, who told me about their addictions, no matter what it, what it was. And, you know, there's the old adage of if you're an addict and, and you, you can't really always, you can't cure it, but you can control it. And you can control it and manage it for the rest of your life. And so many people have been healed by swim, bike, run. Healed in a way that they never thought possible. Sure, their addiction is always lingering. They've got to make sure they go to their meetings and do what they need to do to take care of themselves. But uh, if you if you read Mike Ergo's story in my book, you know, with PTSD and and what he went through of wanting to end his life and how him getting physically fit saved his life. And I've heard that over and over and over again. And what I'm most proud of when people write their bios at the Ironman entry form, we ask, what is your story? And I receive all those prior to the race and I read them all. And, and what's amazing to me is how many people will say, uh, I'm doing Ironman, I've been sober for, for 10 years. I'm doing Ironman, I haven't done drugs for 15 years, or I've been two years sober and now I'm doing Ironman. So it, it, uh, it's healing. And that's one of the chapters in my book about the healing. It's healing and it doesn't always cure because we know it, it, it's tough to cure an addiction, but you can control it and manage it for the rest of your life so it doesn't control you. Well, we know you can go all night, Mike, <laughs> but we're going to have to wrap it up. So thank you for everyone who joined. And Mike, of course, thank you for your time. Here is his book, Finding My Voice. Mike Riley, you can grab it on Amazon. I think my friend Todd posted the links to the books because people were asking. Um, so thank you, as always, Mike, for your voice and your spirit and for everything that you do. I know everyone feels the same. Well, everybody, uh, I always like signing off with aloha, but to this group, I'm going to give you an aloha nui loa. Aloha with love. Be strong. Don't give up, and together we're going to find a finish line. Take care. <laughs>